Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to talk about properties of exponents in algebra. Um, and so there are eight properties that we're going to look at. So we're going to separate this video into chapters. So if you want to skip to a certain property, you can scroll down uh, on the bottom. Okay. All right. So here are eight properties that we're going to look at. The zero property, negative property, product of powers, quotient of powers, power of a power, power of a product, power of a quotient, and negative power of a quotient. All right. So we're going to go through kind of each property and talk about what the property says and look at some example expressions. So the zero property is pretty easy to deal with. For any non-zero number a, a to the zero power is equal to one. Okay, and then if we do have zero to the zero power, that would be undefined. Okay, so let's talk about why this is the case. Let's take just an example. Let's say, for example, we have 10 squared. Right, well, we know that is 10 times 10, which is equal to 100. Okay, so now if I say 10 to the first power, that would be just 10, which is just equal to 10. So now we say 10 to the zero power. Well, as we go down here, what are we doing? We're dividing by 10, right? So if the pattern follows, I need to divide by 10. 10 divided by 10 would be one, okay? So that's why anything to the zero power is one because the base there, 10, could be any other number or expression and it would still give us a value of one, okay? All right, so that's why the power of zero is equal to one. So we look at these, four to the zero, that's one, x to the zero, that's one, negative five to the zero, that's equal to one. Now on number four, it's a little bit tricky because notice that's negative three, but that is not in parentheses. So really you would read that as opposite of three to the zero. Well, three to the zero is one and the opposite of one is negative one, okay? So that's the only scenario where you might have something other than one, and that's because it's the opposite of one, okay? All right, now let's look at negative exponents. For any non-zero integer n and any non-zero number a, a to the negative n is the reciprocal of a to the positive n. So once again, let's look at this chart we had going here, right? 10 squared, 10 to the first, 10 to the zero. We said that was 100, that was 10, that was one. So now the next exponent logically would be 10 to the negative first, right? So once again, what are we doing? We're dividing by 10. So now we're gonna say this would be one divided by 10, which is one tenth. So now if we look at this part right here, 10 to the negative first became one over 10, which is like one over 10 to the positive first exponent, okay? So with a negative exponent, you're gonna take the reciprocal of the base and the exponent is gonna become positive, okay? The exponent stays with the original base. So for example, on number one, we have four to the negative second power. So the reciprocal of four is one fourth, and I keep that exponent with the four, but it becomes positive two, okay? And so now we can simplify that and say that is one over 16, okay? Same thing for number two, x to the negative third would just be one over x to the positive third. And for number three, negative five to the negative first, we would just have one over negative five, okay? All right, so there's negative exponents. Now we have product of powers, okay? So it says to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents, okay? So let's talk about why this one works. Well, this is three cubed times three squared, right? So if I wanted to expand this out, three cubed is like three times three times three, right? And three squared is just three times three. So essentially what we're doing is we're doing three times three times three times three times three. Right? So look how many threes we have. How many factors of three do we have? We have five. So we can just look at their exponents and add them and say this would be three to the fifth. Okay? And then we could obviously write that, um, calculate that to figure out what number that is equal to. I'm just gonna leave it as three to the fifth right now so that we can see what happened with the exponents. Okay, so the same thing's gonna happen here. And we can just add these exponents and we get x to the 19th, okay? So I like to refer to this as MADS, okay? So MADS is like an acronym to help you remember. Um, this is actually two separate properties. This is the multiplication property and the division property that we're gonna look at next. So I'll, tell, I'll talk about MADS again here in just a second. But what this stands for is if you have a multiplication problem with the same bases, you add the exponents, okay? So when we have a division problem with the same base, we're going to subtract the exponents. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. Quotient of powers. 
To divide powers with the same base, subtract the exponents. Okay, so like we said, we had this acronym MADS, right? So if we have a multiplication problem, we want to add the exponents. If we have a division problem, we want to subtract them. Okay, now that's if they have the same base. Okay, so here this would be 7 squared, which is 49, and this would be x to the negative fourth. Now we have to apply the negative exponent rule and say this would be 1 over x to the fourth because we do not, cannot, leave a negative exponent as part of our answer. Okay, so let's talk about why this one works. Well, 7 to the 6, that would be like 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, right? And we're going to divide that by 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. So 7 over 7, 7 over 7, 7 over 7, 7 over 7. Those are all going to cancel out because they equal 1. So look what we're left with. We're just left with 7 times 7, which is 7 squared, which is 49, okay? So on the second one we looked at, we would, we would have had four more factors of x in the denominator. So that means we don't have any x's in the numerator, so we have to put a 1 in the numerator. That's how we ended up with 1 over, and we had four more x's in the bottom, so 1 over x to the fourth. Okay, so that's another way to look at the division property. Look at your original problem and ask yourself, where are there more x's? Well, there's more x's in the bottom. How many more? There's four more. Okay, well, we can't leave the answer like that. We need a numerator for it to be a fraction, so we put a one there, okay? When I looked at number one, where are there more sevens? Well, there's two more sevens in the top, so my answer is seven squared over one, but we don't have to write the over one if the one is the denominator, okay? And so that's how we got 49. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is called power of a power, and I like to call this PPP. Okay, so we have MADS, which tells us multiply, add, divide, subtract, and we have PPP. This stands for power of a power, but I like to call it power, power, product, because what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the exponents, right? So if you see two powers stacked next to each other, just take the product of the powers, keep the base the same. So this is 6 to the negative second, and then raised to a negative third power. So I just multiply negative 2 times negative 3, and I get 6 to the sixth power, okay? Now, once again, we could evaluate that to get the number that that is, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it as 6 to the 6th, okay? And the next one, we have x cubed times, or raised to the negative 4th power, so that's going to give us x to the negative 12th, and once again, we can't leave that negative exponent, so this is going to become 1 over x to the positive 12th, following our negative exponent rule that we looked at just a minute ago. All right, let's look at the next one. This one is called power of a product, okay? So it sounds very similar to the previous one. That's why, I, that's why I like to call the previous one PPP, power, power, product, because if you notice here, we don't have powers next to each other on all of our terms, right? So on number two, we kind of see that, and we're going to use power, power, product, but we have to almost like think about distributing the exponent, okay? Distribute the exponent to all of the terms, okay? So whenever I see power of a product, I like to draw like an arc signaling, hey, I wanna give that exponent to all my terms there. So this would actually be two squared times x squared, and two squared is four, so our final answer is just four x squared, okay? So make sure we give that exponent to the two and to the x. All right, on number two we have, if you notice, we have one, two, three terms, right? So we're going to give this negative 2 to the negative, or the, the exponent of a 2 to the negative 5. We're going to give it to the x term, and we're going to give it to the y term. So this is going to give us negative 5 squared times x squared squared times y cubed squared. So negative 5 squared is 25. Okay, now we have PPP, right? Power, power, product. So this is going to be x to the fourth. We multiplied those, and this is going to be y to the sixth. Okay, we also multiply those. Okay? All right, next one, power of a quotient, okay? So we just have two more. To find the power of a quotient, find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator and then divide, okay? So essentially with this one, we're going to distribute that exponent to all the terms just like we did on power of a product, but then we're going to apply the MADS, the division part, okay? So for number one, I'm gonna make sure I give this four to the three and to the x and also to the two down here. Okay, so this is going to give us 3 to the 4th, x to the 4th, divided by 2 to the 4th. Okay, so now here we can get 81x to the 4th over 16, 
okay? And so now if we have two constants there that would reduce, we can reduce that, but 81 and 16 don't, so we'll just leave it like that, okay? Now for number two, we're gonna do the same thing. We have a couple more terms though, so we need to give this two to the x term, the y term, and the z term. Down here, we need to give it to the four, and we need to give it to a. Okay, so now this is gonna be x squared squared. So PPP tells me to multiply those, so x to the fourth, y to the sixth, z squared, over four squared, which is 16, a squared, okay? And we're done with that one. Now, if I would have had an x term in the, in the denominator as well, then I could apply my division rule by subtracting the exponents, okay? So we'll see that at the end when we do a combination problem. And the last property we're gonna look at before we combine some of these together. <clears throat> Negative power of a quotient says, take the reciprocal of the base, then make the exponent positive, and then just follow the power of a quotient rule. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna take and we're gonna flip what's inside. So we're gonna say three over two x, and now our exponent can become a positive five, and now we just follow the power of a quotient rule. So we give this five to the three, we give it to the two, and we give it to the x. So now we have three to the fifth over two to the fifth, x to the fifth. So three to the fifth and um, two to the fifth, so this would be 32. Three to the fifth, that would be 243. And we have x to the fifth on the bottom. Okay, so that'd be our final answer. And for number two, we're gonna flip. So we're gonna say z cubed is my numerator, x squared y is my denominator. I'm gonna change negative four to positive four. Now we're gonna give four to the z term, to the x, and to the y. So we have z to the three times four, so z to the 12th, x to the two times four, so x to the eighth, and y to the fourth, okay? All right, so now we've run through all eight of those properties, and now we're gonna look at a problem where we put a bunch of those together, okay? So look at this big question we have. We're gonna evaluate the expression using almost all of these properties that we've looked at, okay? All right, so now what we see is we have two separate power of a quotient problems um, or expressions multiplied together, okay? So let's handle just one at a time. So if I look at this first one, I wanna go ahead and just give this exponent of a four to each of these terms, okay? So I'm gonna give the four to the three, to the x and to the y, and also down here to my x, even though that's, that x is a negative two, we can still multiply it by the four and we can adjust it later. So now we're gonna have three to the fourth times, now this is gonna be x to the 12th because we do three times four. And now this is going to be still y to the zero. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I know y to the zero is equal to one, but let's just leave it there for now. And now in the, in the denominator, we're gonna have x to the negative eight, okay? So I'll leave that in parentheses for now. And now let's do the same thing over here. So let's give the three to the y to the x to the five, to the x and to the y. So now we're gonna have y to the sixth times x to the negative 12th divided by five cubed times x cubed times y to the negative 24th. Okay, so we put all that together. Okay, now, since we have two fractions being multiplied together like this, what we can do basically is take away these parentheses and just write this as one long multiplication problem, okay? So how this helps us is now we can look and see if we have any like terms, right? So we know here, three to the fourth, that's just 81. And now we have x to the 12th and x to the negative 12th. Well, they're being multiplied, right? So that's like mads. So that tells me add the exponents, which means 12 times negative 12, or 12 plus negative 12 is just zero. So basically x is gonna go away from the numerator. And then I have, y to the zero and y to the sixth. So zero plus six, and I get y to the sixth. Okay, so for now, I'm done with my numerator. Okay, so now let's look in the denominator. Now we have x to the negative eighth, and we have x to the third. So now that can we can add those, and we have x to the negative fifth, okay? We have one constant down here, which is five cubed. So five cubed is 125. Notice how I wrote that right under my other constant, right, 81 over 125. And the last term that we have is just y to the negative 24th. Okay, so y to the negative 24th. All right, so we aren't done because we still have two negative exponents, okay? So we wanna make sure we have positive exponents. 
When we're looking at a problem like this, when we're combining, if we have a negative exponent in the numerator, we can just bump it to the denominator and it becomes positive. And the same thing works if the negative exponent is in the denominator, just bump it to the numerator and it becomes positive, okay? So now we're gonna take this problem and we're gonna say 81 and this x to the fifth, or to the negative fifth, I'm gonna bump to the top and it's, be, it's gonna become x to the positive fifth. All right, we still have y to the sixth here. And now my denominator, um, 125 is still going to be there, but this y to the negative 24th, I'm going to bump to the numerator and it's going to become y to the positive 24th. Okay, now we're almost done. We'll draw it this way. We still have 81 over 125, but now um, this x term is going to stay here. That's the only x we have, but now we have y to the 6th times y to the 24th. So that's like mads, multiply, add. So now we can write that as y to the 30th and we are done, okay? All right, so that's a little bit about exponent rules.